Hello. I'm the Reverend Cameron Guchar, the rector of St. John the Divine Anglican Church in Squamish, British Columbia. Welcome. I'm glad you found your way here today for our online service of the Word for the fourth Sunday of Easter. Everything you should need for today's service is in the video. However, if you would like an online order of service that you can download, there is one on our website at squamishanglicanchurch.ca. And now let us prepare ourselves for worship. Let's take a few deep breaths together. Breathe in the love of God. And breathe out fear. Breathe in the love of God and breathe out anxiety. Breathe in the love of God and breathe out all those things that might be troubling you today. Breathe in the love of God. And keep on breathing until you are breathing out the love of God onto the entire world. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. May his grace and peace be with you. May he fill our hearts with joy. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, that you have again brought us together on the Lord's day to praise you for your goodness and to ask your blessing. Give us grace to see your hand in the week that is past and your purpose in the week to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, As we turn our hearts and minds to worship Almighty God, let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful God, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of God be with you. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. wondrous things let all the people God's praises now sing all of creation in splendor shall ring Alleluia 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 See how salvation for all has 
has been won. Up from the grave our new life has begun. Life now perfected in Jesus the Son. Alleluia. 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 Now in our presence the Lord will appear. Shine in the faces of all of us here. Fill us with joy and cast out all our fear. Alleluia. 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 Call us, good shepherd, we listen for you. Wanting to see you in all that we do. We would the gate of salvation pass through. Alleluia. 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 Lord, we are open to all that you say. Ready to listen and follow your way. You are the potter and we are the clay. Alleluia. 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 If we have love, then we dwell in the Lord. God will protect us from fire and sword. Fill us with love and the peace of his word. Alleluia. 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 Let us pray. O God, whose Son is the Good Shepherd, send us out as shepherds to seek the lost, to heal the injured, and to nurture all with grace and compassion, through Jesus, who calls each by name. Amen. A reading from the Book of Acts. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, and the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together, and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods, and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the people. Our psalm for today is the 23rd Psalm. I invite you to join in by reading the bolded text. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from 1 Peter. 
For it is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten. But he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that, free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the Church. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep do not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life, and have it abundantly. The Gospel of Christ Alleluia! Christ is risen! The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. This Sunday, along with being the fourth Sunday of Easter, is also commonly known as Good Shepherd Sunday. This is due to the gospel reading assigned for today from John that talks about Jesus as the Good Shepherd. Ironically, the part we didn't actually hear Today was Jesus saying, I am the good shepherd. That comes right after what we read. Nevertheless, I think we can still hear echoes of the image of the good shepherd throughout our reading. God is both 
knowable and unknowable, one of the strange, wonderful claims made by Christians. Because of this, through the ages, the people of God have found that they have needed to use their imaginations to even begin to wonder about the glory of God. They have connected what is unknowable and indescribable to what is everyday and known. And so the scriptures are full of metaphor, stories, and poetry to this effect, as are the works of the artists, theologians, musicians, mystics, and poets from our tradition. To this day, people continue to be moved by explore and play with these ancient and modern images. God the potter, the parent, the builder, the farmer, the king. God, a mighty tree, a rock, a strong fortress, and a burning fire. I wonder what your favorite image of God is. Which one connects with you? Which one helps you grasp, even if just for a moment, the nature of the divine? Because that is what all these images are about, connecting with some truth about who God is and what God is like. One of the most beautiful and enduring images of the divine is the one that we are reminded of especially today, God the Shepherd. We see how popular and long-lasting it is in the small cross-section of the readings that we have for today. Psalm 23, a psalm that has comforted and touched the hearts of countless people through the millennia with the image of God as a shepherd. God as my shepherd. Centuries later, this image is again used in 1 Peter. You were going astray like sheep, it says, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. I wonder what this beautiful reoccurring image of the shepherd reminds us about the divine. What does it tell us about who God is and what God is like? Well, the shepherd cares for the sheep. The shepherd guides, guards, and protects their sheep. The shepherd stays with the sheep no matter what, even through the valley of the shadow of death. When they stray, the shepherd seeks out and gathers up their lost sheep. In our gospel today, Jesus continues to play with this familiar image of a shepherd. And his contribution to this collective imagination is that the shepherd, the good shepherd, calls his own sheep by name and leads them out and that the sheep know his voice. The shepherd knows the sheep by name, and the sheep know his voice. I wonder how that makes you feel. It makes me shiver a little bit. There is something in this beyond just the words that resonates deep within my heart. They know his voice. When I hear this, I wonder what this might be telling us about who God is, what this might be telling us about what Jesus is like. As I enter into this wondering, I imagine that if the shepherd calls each by name, if the sheep know his voice, then that means that the shepherd has really put in the time, has done the work to get to know those sheep. To learn each of their names, 
to have them know his voice, I imagine that the sheep really matter to that shepherd, that the shepherd is devoted to them. The shepherd is devoted to the sheep. And so I wonder if this is what God is like, if this is who Jesus is. Today, along with being the fourth Sunday of Easter, along with being Good Shepherd Sunday, is also the World Day of Prayer for Vocations, a day marked in many Anglican, Lutheran, and Roman Catholic churches. And typically, when we talk about the Day of Prayer for Vocations, we focus on those people whose vocations are religious life or ordained ministry. And these vocations are so important. I am so grateful for my own vocation as an ordained member in the church. And so we should pray for those who are discerning this call. And we should give thanks that God continues to raise up people to serve in this way. However, vocation is so much bigger than just religious life and ordination. Vocation simply means to call. And in this sense, each of us has a vocation, perhaps even more than one, because God, the Good Shepherd, calls us to follow and serve in a great diversity of ways. The theologian Frederick Buchner wrote about vocation that it is the place where our deep gladness meets the world's deep need. Where our deep gladness meets the world's deep need. And Jesus said, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. What is your deep gladness? Where do you see the world's deep need? Where do these things meet for you? Where does Christ call you into abundant life? Maybe your job is your vocation, and maybe it isn't. Maybe part of your vocation is being a parent or grandparent or friend, partner, or neighbor. Maybe it has to do with learning or teaching, maybe building up what needs to be built up or tearing down what needs to be torn down. The possibilities are truly endless. Whatever it is, I hope that you have an opportunity to spend some time wondering about and exploring your vocation, asking what it means to go where God is calling you, what it looks like to follow Jesus into service and abundant life. In our reading from Acts today, I think it describes some people who found their vocations. We hear that the fledgling Christian community devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship to the breaking of bread and prayers. They devoted themselves. I think that our vocation might be whatever it is that we find ourselves devoting to. Those patterns, actions, and relationships that are so energizing that they bring life to you and to the world around you. And I think that if this way, when we follow our calling, when we are able to lean into our vocations, devo devoting ourselves to where our deep gladness and the world's needs meet, we are most closely following Jesus. We are most faithfully echoing the example of God, the Good Shepherd, who is devoted to us. Thanks be to God.
I invite you to join with me in the words of the Nicene Creed. Let us confess our faith as we say, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With the Spirit of God alive in us, with the breath of life filling our bodies, with the light of Christ warming our hearts, let us join together in prayer. Most holy God, we give you thanks for this time of worship. Even though we are not physically together, through you we are together in spirit. Blessed are you, God of grace. You have called each one of us to be your love in the world. Grant us the grace to move beyond our own self and our preoccupations that way we may be grounded in your peace. Blessed are you, God of grace. Empower us to live out your holy message in ways that bring justice and integrity to all people and all of creation. Deliver us from our lethargy and cynicism. Guide us in ways that will support all who are in need. Blessed are you, God of grace. We pray for those suffering from illness and for those paralyzed by grief or sorrow. We pray for all who mourn the death of a loved one, the death of a relationship, the loss of work, and for those steeped in loneliness. Grant them all your peace. Blessed are you, God of grace. We pause to pray for your world, O God, and all of the places and people who rest on our hearts. We hold before you Heather Booza, Eleanor, Lori, Tyler, Edie, the Howe Sound Women's Center, the residents of Hilltop House, the residents of Shannon Falls, the elders of Squamish Nation, and the patients of Squamish General Hospital. In this time of COVID-19, we pray for all who are sick, for all who are grieving, for healthcare professionals, researchers, and emergency personnel. We pray for those in positions of power and for those who provide us with the essentials of our day-to-day -day living. We pray for all who call the downtown east side home as they face the trauma of enduring two health crises simultaneously. Guide us in your love, O oh God, to live in your compassion, justice, and tenderness with one another. Blessed are you, God of grace. Trusting in your wisdom, we offer all our quiet thoughts and prayers into your care. In your holy name we pray. Amen. We invite you to make a gift to support the ministry of St. John the Divine as you are able. Oh, 
de Deo. Alleluia. Jubila te Deo, jubila te Deo. Alleluia. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. May the God of hope Fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.